Hi guys, Ryan here, Ion Capital Solutions. So what do we do next when we have affordability of an offer, right? Um, so if we go over to our worksheet, right, we had our client Brass, and Brass had $62,000 in affordability. So from the lender, right, on deck in this case, um, they had that renewal option, right? Now in the past, they borrowed and paid back on time. So the lender's saying, we'll give you what you got last time, we'll give you term options, right, six, seven, nine, twelve month terms, right, or, or, we'll give you $75,000 this time over 18 months, right, your payment will roughly be the same, but it ends up being more expensive in the end, right, so the client didn't want that, he just wanted $50,000, now, I do not remember if he took the, the, the 12 or the 9, the 7, I'm pretty sure he took the 9, but in any event, this is how it's displayed to the client, the way the offer is displayed, right? Uh, this was a smarter client. He understood what APR was. He understood what an interest rate was. So he wanted that information. Normally, I would not include that when I said the numbers over. And when I do send the numbers over, I'm already on the phone with the client. I don't just send this over in an email, okay? So get him on the phone. Hey, Mr. Client, I'm going to send you the offer now. You're ready. And then I send it over, and this is what it would look like, right? And I cut it out for obvious reasons. But... This is, is what it looks like. So let's review. Here's the official offer. Looks like they are only offering 75K over 18 months. Again, it's at 27% APR, reiterating what I said over the phone. Now, he was looking for around $100,000. It just wasn't going to happen, right? Otherwise, you're looking at $50,000 uh, 50, at an interest rate of a 1.23 to a 1.39, depending on the term you choose, right? So there's flexibility, right? Ultimately, your payment can be lower if you go with an extended term, but your interest is higher. Your interest can be lower if you go with the six-month term, but your payment is higher, right? So it's for the client to kind of pick and choose, right? The payment amounts are rough estimates based on a total number of weeks. They will slightly adjust based on calendar business days. And this is because I did this with my calculator, right? Based on what I got from the lender, right? And keep in mind, it can adjust. There's roughly 21 business days in a month, but there's holidays, there's things to consider, right? So the exact contract will have it totally spelled out what the schedule will be and not before, because why would they work on something like that if they're not going to have an accepted offer, right? So this was an easy shoe-in sort of deal, right? Uh, we already had a uh, an option, right? We already had an option for, for, the, um, for the client. But that being said, how do we select a lender? Where do we know where to go with this file? With all of these qualifications, right, with all of these perks that make one lender better than the other, this is how you determine where you're sending your deals. This is how you can have a lender network of, what are we at, like 16 lenders, 17 lenders, and determine where to go quickly. What are you going to do? Sit there and read through the lender guidelines for each lender one by one? That's not efficient. That's going to take you forever. Think you're going to remember all that information? You're not. And so you need to build out a tool. So those of you who are not comfortable with Microsoft Excel, Google Sheets, get comfortable. Okay? You need, it's a required skill to manage your finances, to manage your data, to build tools to help you have an expedited approach to underwriting the way we do it. Because it's fast. It's accurate. It's organized. And that's how you need to be. There's a lot of lenders to consider here. We're not going to display our lender network for obvious reasons, right? But if you look at the lenders, right, there's a lot of them. And they offer different products. So let's examine the board. Let's examine what information we use to determine what lender we're sending to. Well, first of all, when you highlight the box for each lender, it's going to populate information about that lender. Right? Products, MCA, and lines of credit, preferred industries, restaurants, bars, and eateries, right? auto repair, so on and so forth. Right? If you go to another lender, right, just does MCA. If you go to this lender, they do MCA and equipment financing. They, do, they also will do startups and established businesses. Right? So they do both. Many, many lenders don't do startups. So, hey, I got a startup guy. What do you know? We have a lender for you. Right? They happen to fund cannabis industry. Not everybody's doing that yet. Good to know. Good to know. Right? So... Basic information around the lender. Here, this lender, lender F, no Canada. No Canada, okay? Um, it's it's for uh, non nonprofits are, are, are okay. Uh, a full board of resolutions are needed though, right? So anyway, you're getting information about the lender knowing what products and why, right? But first you wanna start with calculations, right? And, or excuse me, qualifications. And you're not going by rate yet, okay? You're going by qualification, 
right? What are the FICO requirements? What are the revenue requirements? If you notice these little black arrows in the top right corner of certain boxes, that means there's a note there. There's more information. So just a heads up, make sure you're clicking there, hovering over it. But that's what's determining what we can do, right? So, okay, the person's doing over 65000 a month, right? Um, but it's a trucking company or a construction or a California business. They need to be doing 100K a month, right? You need to know these things out of the gate. What are the mon minimum monthly deposits that are required? The minimum for this lender uh, is 10 deposits, right? So if they're, they're only uh, depositing eight, right? It doesn't qualify. So anyway, how long has their time in business been, right? Um, number of positions that, that are allowed, right? If we have a client who's got two positions, we can't go to lender C. Right? But lender D has first through fourth positions. Positions are the number of loans. First position is the first loan. Second position is the second loan, so on and so forth. Right, And so bankruptcies and on and on we go. Right, We even have closing docs that are needed. So once you've selected your lender and you want to understand what the back end of the, the latter end of the deal looks like, here you go. Here's information of what they're likely going to be asking for. Right, In terms of submission and what we need when we're submitting to the lender, this is what we need to submit to the lender. Right, so this helps you figure all that information out. Once you get that, once you found your lender, the one that makes sense based on qualification, or maybe you found a few lenders, then you're looking at pricing, right? What their buy rates usually are. The buy rate is 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 the principal plus interest, right? The sell rate is the principal plus interest with our points on top, right? So there's a difference between the two. So a buy rate is not the actual rate. Don't forget you're putting your five points in there, right? So if you get them a, a one two zero, oh, it's going to end up being a one two five that you're selling it at, right? Um, anyway, that's going to do it for this video. We'll catch you on the next one.